furthest out I've ever gone without seeing anybody. It's just kind of creepy. It's kind of weird. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Got to mind your own. on these roads with my new tires that's for sure that's what these tires were made for instead of those cheap off-brand ones I had yep shoot I think we missed it there was there it is an antelope can you see it oh there's a baby Sadie. Oh, I wasn't even shooting them. <laughs> there they are. in loops so I'm wondering if that's more ghost town we shall see I'm curious I want to keep going I didn't expect this coal mining district so this was the coal mine Jeepo number five opening is located behind you where the large wooden beams are on the ground oh look at that oh wow Let's go find the coal mine opening. 
Wow. So Jibo was a coal mining town where the large wooden beams are. I don't see them. Behind you. Huh. Wow, look at though. The town was named for Samuel Jibo, who was the developer of the coal mines in Washakie and Hot Springs counties, which this is Hot Springs County, during the 1880s. With the arrival of the railroad in the Thermopolis area, it was the Owl Creek Coal Company that was formed to start mining the, the coal that was north of Thermopolis. Large wooden, oh, over there, okay, I see. Okay, let's go over there, I see it, I see something. Well, I certainly didn't expect this. <laughs> I didn't, oh yeah, I see it. Um, I didn't expect to come so far out. This area is on freecampsites.net and uh, the, the spot that's on freecampsites.net is probably a couple miles down the road, although I was going super slow. The road is um, rocky, but uh, I think a couple miles. And I'm way out here by myself. I haven't seen another camper on this road. I have no cell signal. I don't have AT&T or Verizon. I mean, look, um, I think I want to stay here. I think I'm gonna. I'll stay here for one night. I mean, how cool will it be, right? To just stay, look at this, it's amazing. I mean, it is amazing. I gotta stay here. And it's beautiful. Wow, an old ghost town in Wyoming. How awesome is that? <laughs> and I could drive to it, which is, that's the surprising part. The road was so good. There's one part that's, uh, I'm a little worried about getting out. <laughs> I was a little worried about coming in. It's washed out. It's got a big hole on one side and I had to inch way over to one side, but that's it really. Okay, how do we get over there? Wow, wanna see? Look at this. And isn't Wyoming the least populated state? So that would make sense why I keep finding these spots where Nobody is. Hey, Sadie girl, stay with me. Oh, wow, look at this. Air and ventilation, right? If it is, it just goes straight down. It smells like sage. The mining claims were patented by mostly out-of-towners, people from across the country, New Yorkers, and, and that started in about 1906. And uh, 
the entry men, as they were called, hired Jibo, to, who was an attorney, to manage those claims. And the federal government didn't like it, and they wanted to get it closed down. And then the Owl Creek Company was the one that became the company town. So there's a lot of kind of interesting history here. So I've been at the uh, abandoned coal mine, ghost town, since about 2, it's about 7. Sadie and I have done some wandering around, and I have a little bit of a cell signal, enough to text. I don't know why that matters. <laughs> it does, sort of. I'm going to stay here. Yeah, at least for one night, maybe longer. It's only Tuesday. I don't need to get a video up till Thursday, so that means I really can sit here and work, and then just go into town on Thursday to upload a video. So it is absolutely gorgeous out here, and nobody is out here. It's amazing. So the coal mine, this is the coal mine site. I think I already told you a few miles down the road is the town site. Uh, I'm at least four miles, as far as I can tell, from the nearest person. So I'm going to be out here completely uh, alone with Sadie in an abandoned ghost town, <laughs> coal mine. And um, the town is, is down the road. So this coal mine ran from like 1901 to 19... And I've discovered a few openings, a few... Uh, openings yeah into the mines and I found that sign up there from the Bureau of Land Management which shows the underground tunnels and I was able to look online I have enough of a signal that I was able to look online and said yeah there's lots of openings but don't go in them because they could collapse and I'm not gonna do that <laughs> that would really be weird um, <laughs> I don't want to die out here in an old mine in an old mine an old coal mine at that so yeah I'm gonna stay here for the night I did see one um, blog or something like that that said that some say it's haunted, especially down by the old town. There's a cemetery I passed on the way in. I'll go check it out on the way out uh, tomorrow or the next day. But um, it, I mean, look at this place. <laughs> I mean, the, the website that I did see, one of the websites said that you do need a four wheel drive to come out here. Not even close, but maybe that's why people don't come out here or just Wyoming. <laughs> What you doing, Sadie? You know, maybe just Wyoming. I think it's the least populated state. There's more cows than people. And so there's plenty of solitude if you're willing to just drive a few miles out of the way. I'm like 15 miles from Thermopolis. Look at this. So I'm going to check in with you later. Or tomorrow. I'll check in with you tomorrow. Maybe later. We'll see how it goes once the sun goes down. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes. And uh, I'll show you around a little bit. Maybe tomorrow. Well, we had a mostly uneventful night. In the ghost town. Or the ghost, the ghost, um, what's it called? Coal mine, <laughs> coal factory, coal mine thing. Right after dark, I was just falling off to sleep and, and Sadie started barking. And she's got a super sharp, piercing bark. And I assumed it was a critter. And so I kind of rolled over and she jumps up in the, in the front seat, in her seat, and just starts looking out the front window and barking. And... I really was half asleep. I rolled over and I saw uh, taillights leaving. So a car actually came out here, which was a little bit of a shock. But I watched the lights go down as far as I could see. But that's it. No, no weird noises. Full moon even. <laughs> I gotta tell you, I was a little bit on edge. I was, I was scaring myself. Remember my rules, my uh, my rules, my tips for not scaring yourself, not getting in your head being logical you know and i was letting a lot of weird things get to me the full moon uh i had mistakenly read one article that said the town down the way was haunted and you know i just kind of started letting superstition and stuff get to me but yeah totally uneventful and uh nice place totally totally quiet just that one car so i think i'm gonna stick around today
yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna. I haven't even had a cup of coffee yet, so I'm gonna pour a cup of coffee, play with Sadie, and get on with my day. Yeah, really awesome place to camp. this for a morning walk. I wanted to see where these power lines led. I thought it was strange that it came all the way out here. They're not, yeah, I guess they're newer. I mean, they're, they look, they're not making any noise. I was trying to figure out if they were active. So I came out at least a mile. I'll turn on my walking app on the way back to see how far it is, but it goes behind me up around the hill there. I was kind of hoping I might find water, even though I know the river is across the highway from where I came. But I this is I this has got to be like second best maybe boondocking spot I have ever had. <laughs> my first best still being my secret place, <laughs> California. Maybe I don't know. This is awesome. Yeah, I don't have a great internet signal here. Although I went up on a hill and I did see. So I don't have AT and T at all, but I can. I tried to do a little test video on my phone, which is Verizon, and I it actually went up fairly quickly, much quicker. It's interesting, since I've been in Wyoming, my download speeds are slow, my upload speeds seem a little faster, which I hardly ever, ever encounter. But, uh, oh my gosh, it rained all night last night. You can see my rig all the way over there. Oh my gosh, where'd she go? There she is, look at this. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Oh, here, let me turn my camera stabilizing on so it doesn't bounce so much when I walk. Look at this! Is this Wyoming or is this Wyoming? Oh my gosh, look at that. What? Home, home on the range. Where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. <laughs> Definitely the most beautiful part of Wyoming so far, except maybe Yellowstone. And the bear tooth, right? That was Wyoming and Montana. Yeah. But this, wow. So I am worried about antelope. I don't want her to chase an antelope. Or uh, out here, maybe even a mountain lion. So she does have a leash on. We walked on leash for a minute because I saw some antelope. the hills I mean maybe months this is freaking amazing I'm thinking like you could live out here <laughs> it'd be illegal so you can't but if they would like lease you <laughs> some land you could be the caretaker of the old mining town I mean I think I don't even know what uh, altitude I'm at I'm thinking at least 5,000 because of the to the desert terrain. Yeah, I'm probably at least 5,000, maybe six. And uh, it snows in the winter. But man, if you could find a way to collect water, because it's rained a lot lately. I don't know if that's normal for Wyoming this time of year, but it's amazing. <laughs> I love it here. Really cool. just in time the storm chased us home it was blue over here and gray over there
beautiful. And I have to stay here until those big pod mud puddles dry out at least. So it's going to rain today. It's going to be clear tomorrow. Yeah. And one of my favorite breakfasts this morning, quinoa flour and oat flour pancakes. I already put in the oat flour. I grind up my own oats in my coffee grinder. Just regular oats and grind them up into a flour. A little bit of pumpkin pie spice. And then vegan egg. You can either use flax seed or chia seeds. I like chia seeds in these. So I don't measure anything. Just throw some chia seeds in a bowl with a little bit of warm water and some vanilla and then you let it sit for a while and it kind of like congeals. And that's kind of a binder for your pancakes. So just stir it up. See? <laughs> Make sure you stir up the flowers with a, uh, I use, I'm still messing around with the baking powder, but I use about a teaspoon of baking powder. Then I add hemp milk or whatever milk I'm using, hemp or macadamia or oat. Once the uh, pop, the chia seeds have sat for a while, maybe at least five or ten minutes, then I pour in the milk, mix that all together. Then pour it in the flour. Stir, not a lot. No sugar, no oil. I don't like it super sweet. Use uh, spray olive oil on my skillet. And then cook them up. They're delicious. Sort of. They're healthy at least. <laughs> I don't know if I'd go so far. Sometimes I put jelly on them. Sometimes I might put a little tiny bit of maple syrup on them. But I try to avoid sugar. They're not too bad. Healthy and filling. and nutritious. Young lady. Really? In a mud puddle? Really? You're filthy. Now you're filthy! Oh. <laughs> Are you a pig or a dog? Isn't, don't piggies like to lay in their slop? Are you a piggy or a dog? So I want to go explore a couple of these interesting buildings or whatever cut into the side of hills. I've already been over here, but without my camera, just on one of my wanderings. So this time I brought my camera and a flashlight. So let's go see what the heck these things are. Kind of fascinating stuff around here. Ready to go in? You want to go in with me? Whoa. Oh, look at this. Wow. I couldn't really see much at all without a flashlight last time. Wow. There's a shelf. What? Did somebody live in here? 
Oh my gosh, look at that. Home brand cornflakes. Wow. Probably from the 19, early 1900s. Oh, wow. This isn't a mine. Macaroni and noodle, Denver. Can you see that? <laughs> so it's insulated with boxes. Look at this one. Home brand cornflakes. Griggs, Cooper and Company. Josh uh, Abbott. Can you see that? We have no idea how old that is. What is that? Something zero zero Z. So storage maybe? I don't think anybody lived in here. I'm too creeped out to go all the way in. I don't want it to cave on cave in on me. See that wood platform? Look at this. Look at the door. Hinges. Hmm. What do you think, CD girl? these pile remnants of coal everywhere throughout here. Probably just where they piled it on the ground or where it fell during transport and it just stayed in the ground forever. I wonder what this was. Kind of weird, just a square box chimney maybe. An old foundation and look at this the rocks piled like around it's just kind of weird just like yeah that's weird oh yeah oh wow that was an opening <laughs> <laughs> and they filled it in yeah they didn't crazy people going inside. Huh. Yeah. They filled all this in. Wait, are they showing this? Okay, there we go. Yeah. It's cold. Jeba was a typical company town. The houses, the store, the butcher shop, utilities, everything was owned by the company. <laughs> what you doing, pretty? Rent was free, but the company charged a dollar for a load of coal to be brought in by truck and emptied in the coal shed by the houses. A few people chose to build their own house or to add on to the company house. Look at this, though.
This might have been like an old mover or something, right? Transporter, move it from the mine to the to a truck or whatever. <clears throat> I've seen pictures of those. Oh yeah, look at that. Car mover lines, right? Yep. I've seen some records that say that at the height of its popularity in the 1920s, there were as many as 20,000 people in Jibo. But all of the official records that I've seen, BLM and historical museum things, that I've seen, that I've read, said at most it was 2,000 people, with BLM saying at the height in about 1928, it was 1,200 people who lived in Jibo. With about 600 of those being employees of the coal mines and the rest were family. This had to be storage. Look at the big bolts and stuff on it. Maybe dynamite, because they had to dynamite the uh, mines still, right? Even the coal mines. I bet they stored dynamite in here. Ha. Huh. Yeah, I guess it would make sense. Look at that brick. LCP. LCP. Colorado. Huh. With these big, heavy reinforcements on the doors and this. It had to be dynamite, right? Wow. The town was a huge melting pot with nationalities and cultures from all over the world. There were Finns and Czechs and Slavs, Serbians, including Serbians, and there were other nationalities, including Hungarians, Bulgarians, Russians, Italians, Scots, Irish, English, and two Japanese families. Awesome boondocking spot. Check it out. Don't wreck it. Clean up after yourself. Starting in 2003, BLM started a rec reclamation project out here to make it safer for people. So they closed off the mines, they made sure there weren't any holes in the surface of the earth that were sinking into the mines and uh, causing people to get hurt. They also set out to preserve the coal slack piles, maybe that's what I've been seeing, blasting magazines, loadout features, concrete foundations, structures, and more. And the, this area right here is known as the Miller Mine Loadout. The Miller Mine Loadout, that's what this is. By 1938, the mines had closed. In 1955, the mail service stopped going to Jibo. And in the 1970s, they raised the town. So not much remains of the actual town, or as you can see, the main mining district. But there are a few old structures that remain. I just love exploring, checking out old stuff. I have no idea what this stuff is, but it's fun to wonder. Wonder who used it, who left it. <laughs> like an old iron nail thingy. Put it 
right here where I'm putting the rest of the cool stuff I'm finding. And then I'll just leave it here. Something else. It's metal. It's not a gold coin. And a couple rocks. Oops. This is where I thought I'd come if there was a tornado. And here would have been safest in a tornado, don't you think? Those of you who live through tornadoes are going, No, you're an idiot! You would have died! <laughs> I don't know. That looks pretty safe to me. Look at this, though. Look at this. Look at the layers in this. This is amazing. <laughs> wow. Look at it. Oh my gosh. Look at that. How cool can you see? I bring a flashlight. Look at how cool that is. Wow. <laughs> Very cool, huh? So this is a rock or a piece of metal, a piece of iron. Look at that. It looks like a rock. I think it is. <sighs> Sounds like a rock. Look at that. That's really cool. Like I said the other day, I could spend months exploring this area. This is uh, my last morning, I think. <laughs> I'm like tempted to stay. I don't know why I'm leaving. But, um... I feel like I need to get back to life, adulting. Um, and, uh... What was I going to say? Yeah, every time I come out here, I see something different. It's just, this is amazing. I've been up on these rocks before, but I hadn't, like, kind of gone inside and looked around as closely as I am now. It's amazing! <laughs> this is a special spot. This is a really, really cool spot. Especially now that humankind is gone. All the damage that was done um, beginning more than 120 years ago is gone. And nature has reco recouping, recovering, taking back. You can just imagine. I've seen uh, pictures. I'll see if I can, what the usage is, if I can insert them into the video. Of just these stacks with black smoke just spewing into the air. So I can just imagine what this area was like when the coal mining was running. And now look at it. It's almost pristine. And yet definitely everywhere I look, almost I can see the effects of humans. Well, yeah, the power lines for one. But it's beautiful. It's quiet. Maybe nobody wants to come this far out. Hang on, I got an itch. Maybe nobody wants to come this far out and camp in a ghost town alone without much of a cell signal. 
But if you are not afraid, you will be rewarded. Ah, phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Not a bad stop. up staying one more day after my little morning wandering I was like you know what I don't want to go and I tried to get a video upload it was a 1.2 gigs and after you see eight o'clock I don't know eight hours it was only 25% up <laughs> so I was like you know what that's okay it's okay the world won't end so uh, it is Friday, so I'm heading out today, and my water's on empty, which means I have a couple days left, but it seems like I'm going through water faster these days. It's only been like 10 days. Tuesday, a week ago, last Tuesday. Tuesday will be two weeks. So, see, it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, that's like 12 days, because I really, it's on, it's on red. Although that doesn't, it used to be that I could go two or three days if I really conserved when it was on empty. Now it seems less than that. So I think maybe Sadie, Sadie drinks a lot of water. <laughs> so that might be the difference. But um, anyway, heading out this morning. I am going to look for a dump station and a water fill up. I'm about a quarter of a tank of propane, which will probably last me about another week. Um, if I find propane, I will fill up because I don't really know where I'm going, what I'm doing. There's a national forest ahead. If I can find a nice spot, it would be nice to stick around for a while, so it'd be nice to be supplied up. At least with that stuff. I don't know about groceries. <clears throat> this is a pretty <clears throat> rural part of uh, Wyoming. So, there's a little grocery store up ahead. I could go back to Thermopolis, but I don't like backtracking. So, uh, I'll stop at the graveyard on the way out. Don't know that I'm gonna walk into the uh, ghost town. It's a little bit of a walk drive to it. That's where the four-wheel drive comes in. I, re I was realizing, I think I told you guys that one of the reviews said you needed 4x4 four four to get to the ghost town. You only need 4x4 four four if you want to actually drive up to the ghost town. I mean, you can see it from this road, which is not 4x4. Four four. And, uh, you know, I, when I was thinking I would camp there, it would would have been a nice walk from camp. So, we'll see when we get there. <clears throat> so, here's the spot that's been the most concerned to me. There's a sinkhole on the left. Well, though it's a wa it's getting washed out actually, and I was worried, you know, with the rain and everything. Can you see it? All right, there it is. So, just... yeah, that worried me a little bit. So. <laughs> way over there we go went as far over there as I could ran into some sagebrush which smells amazing by the way but I was worried if it was too much rain that might get washed out or the weight of my vehicle might make it crackle so that was my only concern and a couple deep ish mud puddles I think the one that I already passed all right The secret to going through mud puddles or mud is, you know, if it's only like a small patch and you're kind of worried about it, like I didn't know coming in how deep these mud puddles were, just, you don't want to, you don't want to gun it. You just want to put it in, like I had it in uh, second gear and you just want to slow and steady pace on your, um, 
gas pedal because you don't want to spin your tires. If you crank it, you know, you're nervous and you crank it and you want to get through, you could spin your tires and you could end up getting stuck in the mud. So you really just want a firm and steady pace going through it. I think coasting even probably would be the best. I don't know. Oh, look at that spot. Oh, look at this. I remember seeing this coming in. You want to get out, Sadie girl? Go take a look. Of course, I have my awesome KO2s. Wow, this would have been a nice camping spot. This is one of the ones I looked at and I said, if there was nothing ahead, I'd come back to it. Wow, this is pretty. Close to the road. Are there no two, I think two cars out here. I've been out here for three days and only two cars came all the way out there. So, wow. <laughs> I just love it here. This is one of my new favorite spots. Wow. Hear the morning birds? Here's the cemetery and somebody's camped out here. So this is just above the uh, ghost town. So it's about where the pin for free campsites.net drops you. And like I said, I, you know, like I always say, if you want solitude, go past the people, go past the pins where everybody goes. And uh, not a bad place to camp though. It's pretty here, right by the town. So easy walking and exploring. Come on, Sadie. Come on, good girl. And, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful area. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. I haven't checked to see if the internet, if the cell signal is any better here. Notice. Do not destroy. What's up with the key? There's a key. What is that key? key? Oh, somebody just put it there, so somebody dropped it. Cultural resources are fragile and irreplaceable. The Archaeological Resources Protection Act protect them for the benefit of all Americans. It's a shame, we have to say, don't destroy shit. <laughs> you know? Kind of like that spot in, um... Kind of like my new favorite spot in the, in Nevada that I, oh, that's right, I only took patrons. So there was a really cool spot with some great history and I made a video for patrons and, uh, one of the it was monuments and stuff like that and they were destroyed but anyway lek so oh look at this 1849 to 1917. fado something it's chipped gone but not forgotten Ooh, something's digging claude hall oh so thaddeus hall and claude hall 1885 to 1920 35 years old Claude. Is Claude? Claude could be a guy, right? 1920, 1917. Oh, he lived a good long life. 50, 67, 68 years old. Wow. This one, 35. Not so much. But people died young in coal mines. Mini Jubar died 1914. 
baby. 1915. Baby Juba. Oops. People put money here. I guess they're offerings. Look at this wooden cross. Wow. Leo Jarvis, 1915, I guess, to 57. Wow, again, really old. 1555. Died during the Civil War. I mean, was born during the Civil War. Wow. Came out here to Wyoming. Died in a coal mine. Ten, at least. Don't worry, Sadie already pooped. She's not gonna poop in here. <laughs> in case you're worried. Vita. Died 1916. Baby Easton. Aw, baby. Mary Easton. Jeez, another baby. Nine months old. Wow. Mary Easton, baby Easton. So this one must have been, must have died born or when he was born. Didn't even say though. This one lived nine months. That poor family. Jeez. I guess life was hard in a coal mine. Town. Even for babies. Look at this. Another baby. Our darling. Oh. Alavi Matson, 1915 to 1916. Jeez. That's really sad. Another baby. Ray and Abby Dickey, born and died 1916. A lot of babies were stillborn. Well, yeah, did you see the... Uh, I don't know if I was able to put the pictures in this video. We'll see when I'm editing. The coal dust, the smoke, dark black smoke. Ida Mae Wedlock, wife of Nathan Hobson. 1893, geez, to 1915. She was 22 years old. Boy, people died really young in this area. That's really tragic. Really sad. Another one, wedlock. Alice Rennie, 19, 1898 to 1914. So she was only 16. Jeez. Why is it babies and women that seem to be doing all the dying? Huh. February 1919 to August 1919? Jeez. I guess this sums it up. This is really, I'm getting way too sad. March 19, so Mary Lena something, three years old. Life was hard in the coal mine town. Well, geez. Was this just the cemetery for the babies? No, that would be weird, right? They'd want to be buried. Well, the I'm sure the I'm sure the people, 1916, it went on. Well, as I say, I'm sure the people left. Maybe they did. Maybe they left the town. 
all the tragedy and all the illness, maybe they just left. 1924 to 1924. Jeez. This is really, really sad. Really sad. Three years old. 1918 to 1921. Oh my gosh, I gotta get out of here. This is really sad. Jeez. All for coal. All for coal. For jobs. Right? But money? I don't know. Boy, I'm really upset right now. This is really sad. Alright, I'm gonna mosey. Come on, Zadie girl. Yep, you see that? Uh, this is the exact spot. They're, they're in the exact spot that freecampsites.net dri drives you to. So, there's plenty of room here if you don't want to go any further. This town is right over there. Somewhere. town is out over yonder and I'm not gonna go I just want to hit the road but uh, I'll leave you guys something to explore when you come to visit it so it'll be brand new when you come to visit I had my own little piece of history all to myself for three days so I'm fine with that and the cemetery really bummed me out and I want to get on the road so ah, my door. so I'm just gonna mosey hope you enjoyed hanging out with me hope you enjoyed this amazing, beautiful, gorgeous campsite. And remember, go beyond what everybody tells you to. <laughs> go beyond. Just keep going. Follow, follow roads and see where they take you, and you'll never know what you're going to find. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, days with me in the old ghost town coal, uh, coal mine. And I'll see you in my next spot. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Until next time, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon.